Hey everybody, it's that time, it's the last one. I think it's fairly important about suffering. I'm going to talk about suffering and the water drop. So, now I, I guess this is one of the ideas that has, as I started writing a bunch of like, just, just knowledge or just things I've learned down the idea of maybe putting a thesis or book out or something I doubt I'll ever do that but I just started writing stuff down mainly again to get just, just get it on paper and get it out and so I did something on suffering and I did something on uh, clearing out your water drop there's a little thing I wrote but first suffering why does why is there suffering yeah and I said why do you, you know another video I, you know why why we permit it it's not why does God permit it it's why we permit it you gotta know what, but you have to understand what suffering does. Do you know? Do, is, do you know? Understand what suffering is, and why we suffer. Again, it's part of creation. Suffering is a part of the design for all life, or at least all life that has the ability to feel, have you know feelings. Suffering is natural, so you have to understand why. Why would the creator of the universe allow suffering? Well, first you got to ask yourself what suffering is. Suffering is just the experiencing of pain. We need pain. Pain keeps us alive. But it's more than that. Take a person, puts a hand in the fire. He gets that pain. What does he do? He corrects himself. He gets his hand out of the fire. What else does he do? Well, now his hand's hurting. He ha now he has to solve a problem. How do I stop this pain? Puts it in water. That's the first thing he puts. Finds some water, puts it in water. Eventually, you know, puts it in mud or finds some roots to rub on it. All the way up till now, we have painkillers and, you know, things to prevent infection and all that. Suffering is a motivator. Suffering is how we know something's wrong. Without suffering, how could we ever find a problem? How would we ever know there wasn't a problem if we didn't feel pain? So, Let's look at this idea of suffering. You got all these bad things that people are. So you got to put suffering into two categories. Well, four basic categories, I guess. Natural suffering and unnatural suffering. So natural suffering would be uh, certain diseases, natural disasters, being eaten by an uh, animal, being hurt and you know falling down getting hurt then there's unnatural suffering this is wars famine greed all the fear and suffering majority of people in, indulge in is avoidable suffering unnatural suffering and so well, what's natural suffering what's unnatural suffering and then, what suffering, with both the natural suffering and the unnatural suffering, are just given? We're gonna, and we're just gonna have to endure these things. And which things that we suffer are something we can fix? Well, obviously, you can't really do nothing too much about natural disasters. Although, we don't have to necessarily live in areas where a hurricane hits. Hurricane hits, bam, kills a bunch of people. Earthquake, bam, kills a bunch of people. No one told us to build a building that was heavy enough to collapse if the Earth moved in a region of the world where the Earth moved. No, we humans have decided that we'll take that, you know, the 
the benefits of living in this area outweigh the risks of the people that might die and the destruction that could happen if a earthquake happened. No one told them to move there. No one told people to live on the coast in hurricane. We've just decided that it's worth the risk. So how many people would really die in, in, in natural disasters if we could say just simply avoid them that way? Just not live in places or not build in ways that make us vulnerable to natural disasters. Believe in natural disasters, although natural and unavoidable, is also somewhat avoidable if we chose to. Or we could just continue to accept the risks. It's up to us as human race, it doesn't matter. How about disease? Well, again, disease is definitely something that happens, but what's, does it have a purpose? Well, yeah, it's the head trimmers of life. It helps weed out the weak. It's kind of neat. Well, I mean, there, it's life. Life. There, there, there's no feelings in life, so it weeds out the weak, and it keeps the overgrowth from happening. There is a overpopulation of animals. Disease sets in, just balances out the ecosystem. Because you know, bacteria is life too. It deserves to eat just as much as the deer. You know, but. So we look at disease, but how many of our diseases we have are preventable? Even cancer. How much of the cancer we experience in society is actually avoidable? By simply the amount of, you know, chemicals and other unnatural things we are in contact with every day. Radio waves. I smoke cigarettes. That's avoidable. I'm working on that. You know, how we eat, our lifestyles, the stress, it's, come, it's coming out that a stressed body invites disease. A stressed body invites cancer. So, whereas a healthy body, if a, you know, cell becomes cancerous, a healthy body that's not stressed out may be able to actually fight that cancer and get rid of it. Whereas a stressed out body can't. It doesn't have the power because it's so, you know, it's spending so much time on the stress that it can't keep itself. So how much, so when you look at disease, how much of that is avoidable? How much is it? Yes, there's some that's unavoidable. But for the most part, disease too is something that could be avoided. And we actually in the future will have, have the ability to fix it. Almost all, probably, if not all. It's just a matter of time. Just because it's not happening in our time doesn't mean it can't happen. Even in 100 years, 200 years, we can get rid of disease. Slow process. But it's still, much of it is avoidable. War, that's obvious. You know, one thing I found funny, found interesting, is if you think about what the most immoral activity humans engage in is, it's war. I don't think. I don't, I don't think you can really, because even you, you know all the evil things you say. I bet you, you can lump all that all together, and you still get war. Because that's all those things happen. Yet somehow, God condones this immoral practice for his followers. He has his followers engaging in this ultimate immoral practice when he could just simply have not the nations get engaged in war you will not you will not make weapons of war you will not make weapons of defense as long as you don't as long as you choose to not pr practice war no harm will come to your cities Regardless of Jew or Gentile or whatever, because that would, wouldn't that be a great marketing technique? You, you know, instead of knocking on doors, knock, 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 you know, you want people to follow you. You know, like I was Jimmy John's. They gave him samples. You want a sandwich? You want Jimmy John's sandwich? Because they're delicious, by the way. 
uh, if you want a Jimmy John sandwich, here's a sample. Sample what I sam sample this product. You know, guy gave him a little sample to the world. Here, okay, I'll give you, I'll give the world this. As long as you don't commit war, as long as you are committed to not engaging in war, you'll have my protection. Your cities will be safe. I mean, you know, again, we're talking about the creator of the universe. He's decided that his uh, people should just go around killing people. That a, that his, because you, you realize what you have to do to kill somebody. A warrior, they, they, you know, they don't break down soldiers, you know, people in their boot camp. They're not breaking them down or nothing. You have to create the killer. You have to kill those emotions, of the, that, that natural thing to be, mm, no, stop, don't do that. You have to kill everything, you have to, you have to block everything that is good in you to do that. And back then, Judas days, you know, so you had to, you had to be totally cool with going around hacking somebody up with a, you know, lay about that big. You know, PTS thing, D is a real thing. God allowed his people to have to go through that. So we're talking about creator of the universe. So war is obviously avoidable. There's no need for it. So, famine. We have we produce enough food on this planet right now to feed everybody. It's a fact. The system we have decided to set up to run our society is what doesn't allow it to happen. So again, avoidable. You know. And then if people were taught from an early age this idea of do you want to live in love, do you want to live in fear? Instead of teaching this, you know, original sin, how much of the evil, violent, and morality that's in the world would it cease to exist? And how is this Jehovah's fault? Or how is this Jehovah's responsibility to fix? How is this God's responsibility to fix if all this stuff is within our ability to fix. Because that's what suffering it does. It tells us what, it's, what we need to fix. It tells us what we need to correct. Just because we're suffering a whole bunch, that's, you know, someone, had guy has his hand on fire, ah, I'm suffering, ah, I don't know how to get there, I'm suffering, when he could just move his hand. So, that's suffering. The drop. My dad, when I was young, we had like, in California, we had this huge yard, and had ducks and geese, and we had, my dad cut a 55 gallon drum, and, you know, put it out there, filled it with water, and then after a couple, you know, a week or so in the sun, it would get all pond scummy. So, what he would do is just pull, pull out the garden hose, because it was too heavy to dump, he'd just dump the garden hose in it, and let the new water clear out all of it scummy water and that's basically what society is it's pond scum it's, it's, it's that pond full of pond scum what you need to do what we need we are just and we each human being because we are a global society what we do affects the rest of society just a little bit we are raindrops in the human society and we start out our range up, it's that pond scum. And it is our job to push all that pond scum as much as we can out. And go into the thing full of pond scum. If only a few people are doing that, it's not going to have an effect. But if everybody starts doing it, then it will. And that's what you do. And how do you push that fear and love out? Or that pond scum out? By understanding fear and love and applying it. And, and applying it in your life. All these problems we're so fearful of that God's going to fix for us is fixable on our own. Basically, yes, there will be some sufferings. And there will be, you know, you're not going to get rid of all disease right away. You know, there is going to be natural disasters. There's going to be freak accidents. Eventually, an asteroid is going to hit our planet again. That is even kind of avoidable if we choose. 
if we choose or you know you know survive that long if we can get the technology for it we're not imperfect we are we are creators with the creator of the universe he put us here he put us here so that we could learn to live you know there's no purpose to life other than what life purposes itself to be it's free will and we are practicing our free will on this planet right now and we can change it anytime we want you know no one's out there saying hey we should have a global goal what do we as a human society want to reach no because we're all remember that uh, what I was talking about we are all uh, divided if not politically religiously ideologically economically racially in all these different ways we're divided and Jehovah's Witnesses Mormons Scientologists children of God the Moonies all them people, all them different, you know, Christianity, Islam, religion helps that divide. It's just, it's just another divide. So, if the world's headed for destruction, whose fault is it? It's not Jehovah's, it's not Satan's, it's not Adam's, it's ours. Because we're allowing it. So, something to think about. Because you push your pawns going, you can't be worried about other people. You can't be worried about your neighbor, you, you know, the, the drop next to you, whether he's pushing out his pawn scum, because that's going to distract you from working on yourself. You're worrying about him, you're not thinking about yourself. You're not trying to fix yourself. So, I said, this has been extremely healing, extremely, you know, I'm, this is the best. So, I think I can, you know, hopefully be able to just finally put this thing beside, behind me. I said my piece. Explain what I've learned. What I've come to understand. So, I appreciate everybody watching. Everybody, you know, giving me their time. Those three videos, or yeah, three videos, disfellowshipping, or well, four videos of disfellowshipping, and then the videos on sex abuse and the blood. Please circulate those around. Those are ones I would really like to see because those are the ones where people are harmed. Anyways, I appreciate it. It's been great, and watch out for tea tripping. Um, go on Facebook, I guess, and type it up. Follow me if, you, if you're interested in any t-shirt ideas I might have, you know, check them out. I'm trying to, hopefully by the end of the month, I'll be able to get that done. End of August. So, it's been real. Um, and I'll, you'll probably see me on a t-trip and that's my idea is I'm going to be doing videos for that for my t-shirt company. To where I'll be just, you know, whatever, just trying to, just, just talking about not so much such serious, deep things as this, just, you know, things in general, what I'm doing, how, what I'm learning with the t-shirt business and, you know, kind of get that people see how, you know, well, how, how this is how I'm doing it, you know, maybe help somebody out in that way, so appreciate it all and uh, enjoy living love.